Welcome to Google SketchUp 8 for Architecture students brought to you by the School of Architecture at the University of Queensland. In this series of videos we're going to construct a very simple timber framed house through which we'll learn a few tips and tricks and most of the tools of Google SketchUp. Now we're going to choose the template Architectural Design in Millimeters. Now here we have the standard Google SketchUp interface. Now we've got tools along the top ribbon and along the sidebar. Now if you don't have the tools along the left hand sidebar just come up, check under view, toolbars and make sure you have the large tool set highlighted there. Now I'm just going to delete my scale reference person there. Just go to extents and I'm going to spin myself around there. Now in this first video we're just going to show the difference between groups and components. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up my pencil tool and start myself a joist. Now I'm going to draw a line up the blue axis. My joist will be 150 millimeters high and then 50 millimeters wide. Snap down to there. Snap out to my end point. So there we have the end section of my joist. So I'm going to pull my joist out to give it some length and we're going to make it 4.5 meters long. Now you can see I'm adding these values just by typing them from the keyboard and you can see in the bottom right hand corner they're appearing in that dialog box. So once I've added a value press enter it then applies that value. Now to orbit I'm just using my middle mouse button holding it down and then orbiting around. So there we have a very simple rectangle which represents a beam. Now I'm going to triple click to combine that into one selection. Using my move tool I'm going to then copy this holding my control key down to give me a modifier so that it's copy and not just move and I'm going to copy it 600 millimeters apart. Now I'm going to triple click the first beam that we've made and I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to make a group. I'm going to do a similar thing, triple click the other beam but instead of making a group I'm going to make it into a component. Now we can make a component the same way through the edit, make component or in the toolbar through here we've got the make component tool. Now when we make an, a component it gives us, asks us for a name and we're going to call this joist1 create. Okay so when we highlight them they both look pretty much the same. Now what I'm going to do with the grouped joist I'm going to copy that so again using my move control to modify 600 enter control to modify and do you notice when I do an operation twice it'll automatically default to the value that I've done before now I'm going to escape from that select my joist that is a component and do the same thing so control key to copy 600 enter control key to copy and it should default to 600. There we go. So here we have three joists that are components, three joists that are groups. Now to edit a group or a component, similar operation. Now if I double click you see it gives me a bounding box around that element. Now if I want to shorten the grouped beam I can then just pull it from the end shorten it by 1200, enter, and what you notice is that I'm editing my one grouped element but the other two grouped elements are actually staying the same. Hit my arrow key to exit out of that. Now I'm going to do the same with this component, so double click, edit it, again looks exactly the same. I'm going to pull this in 1200, but what you notice is that because it's a component and that this is repeating the same geometry and information from the host 
um, when we edit one component, we actually edit all of them. Now, this is handy if you're doing a lot of repetitive work, putting lots of joists in, putting lots of windows in, and instead of having to go through and resize and edit everything that is the same, if we have them as components, we just have to do it once and it'll apply the change throughout the similar elements. So that's a good tip um, to bear in mind when you're setting up your model.